Hi there and uh, welcome. Today I'm just going to go through a quick tutorial on how to use one of these old completely manual 35 millimeter cameras. So this one is a Cantina Zeiss Icon. My dad actually bought this camera brand new in the early 60s in Sweden. The camera itself was made in Germany and then he brought it here to Canada when he came here and then I learn to take pictures with this camera. The controls on this camera consist of three rings on the lens. Um, I'll show a close up here because you're not going to be able to see them otherwise. The inner ring controls the aperture. On this lens it goes from the most open setting is 2.8 down to f22. The next ring on the lens is the shutter speed. In addition to the B setting, which is basically holds the sh shutter open as long as you hold the button down, there are four shutter speeds on this. The slowest one is 1 30th of a second, and the fastest one is 1 250th of a second. It's not a large range, but that's what they had on these old cameras. The final ring on the outer one is the focus ring. It's marked in meters, and the way you focus with this is you guess the distance to your subject or measure the distance to your subject. You don't see it through the lens. You have to measure the distance or guess the distance to your subject. Set it on the ring. Hope you got it correct. So the focusing is very simple. May not be the most precise, but that's what it is. The only other, other adjustment on the camera is a little ring up here that you preset when you put film in there to tell you how many exposures on the film to remind you when you're getting low. If you don't set it, you just have no indicator. There's a wind lever here, the shutter button on the top, and that's about it. There's no batteries in this thing, so it just works when you wind it. It's ready to take a shot. The one thing you need to remember is when you put film in this, there is no setting anywhere on the camera for the ISO of the film. So if you put this camera away for a month, forget what ISO film you have in it, you've got a problem. To set the exposure, what you need to use is a separate light meter like this. This is an old light meter, very simple, has a small battery in it. The first thing you need to do is on this meter right here, it says ASA, that's the old term, older terminology, kind of the same as ISO. You need to set the speed of the film to calibrate the meter for that. So I've got it set to 100 because I have 100 ISO film in here. To use the meter, what you do is once you've got it calibrated for the film that's in your camera, you point it at your, your subject, what you want to take a picture of, and then you push this button on the side. And when you push the button, when you push this button, you'll see that one needle moves up. So then what you do is while you're pushing the button, you move this dial to make that needle line up with your light meter. So if I'm going to take a picture in this direction, I can move this to here. Now I can let go of the button once I have them lined up and I can take the readings off of here. So now it will tell me a number of different options that I have. So at 1 30th of a second, which is the slowest shutter speed on this camera, I could use f5.6. If I wanted to go to the 1 60th of a second, it's telling me I could use f4. If I wanted to go to 1 125th of a second, I can use f2.8. So at 125th of a second, f2.8. There's my settings set for the correct exposure. So basically within the range of the shutter speeds and the apertures on this camera, in this current lighting situation, that's what I have for options. The only other thing left to do, camera's already wound. I could guess the distance to the camera that I'm taking this video with at about one and a half meters. And there's a photo. The next thing to do is you can wind it ready for the next picture. That's about it with one of these cameras. There's no, like I said, there's no built-in light meter. There's no range finder or anything on this camera. There are other cameras that you will see out there that look very similar to this camera that actually have a range finder on them. So there is a function in the viewfinder or sometimes in a separate viewfinder that will helps you calculate the distance to your subject. Some of the other cameras like this also have light meters built into them, but this one does not. This is the absolute simplest 
form of camera there is. The nice part about it is that it is simple. It's very reliable. As long as you have film, you can take pictures with it. If you don't have a light meter, if you get one of these cameras and you don't have a light meter, there are numerous apps available, free apps. I have one on my iPhone that I've tested that will work as a light meter and they work very well. I've tested it against my light meter and it gives me the exact same readings. So hopefully this is helpful for somebody who runs into one of these cameras and is trying to figure out how to use it and is trying to use a separate light meter. It's not difficult. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more, subscribe. In the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to do another video that covers the uh, operation of a basic manual SLR. And then in addition to that, I also want to do another video that talks about your aperture and how that affects your depth of field and, and why that matters. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful to somebody. Like I said in my first video, this is just a series of videos for people who have never maybe picked up a camera or have never picked up a film camera and just want to learn the absolute basics. Thanks for watching.